The goal of our Calculating Turnaround Times lesson is to establish a process for figuring out can you get something done in the amount of time that you say that you're going to get something done in. The worst thing you can do when working with clients is promise them that they will receive whatever they are purchasing from you by a certain date and then you just can't get it done in time. To do that, we will define what turnaround time is. We will practice identifying steps that are needed to complete a task. That task can be anything relating to any industry, but we'll apply it to the commercial graphic arts industry. We'll then take those tasks or the things that need to be done in order to complete a project and estimate or assign time values for each item in the task. And then we'll use those times to calculate how long it will take to produce whatever we're producing. We'll then use that to figure out what is the absolute last day that we can start a project to meet a deadline for a client, and then we'll effectively communicate that to our clients. So what is a turnaround time? A turnaround time is the time necessary to complete all tasks in a given operation. Everything you have to do in life can be broken down into segments that need to be completed in order to finish an overall task. For example, in order to get to work today, I had to do a number of different things. I had to wake up, I got showered, I got dressed, I packed my lunch, I fed my cat, I warmed up my car, I drove to work, I parked, I walked into the building. All of these things were necessary for me to be able to get to where I am right now to record this video for you. When we use this information to create a timeline or to calculate a turnaround time, what we're going to do is we're going to ask ourselves a question. When do you want or need to complete your project by? This is the very first question you should ask yourself when calculating a turnaround time. When do you need to be done? If I'm trying to budget my time, meet client demands or the needs of a client, I need to make sure that whatever they're asking, I can get done before they need it. I might be able to get done weeks or months or years in advance, but the absolute thing that I'm trying to figure out is can I meet their deadline? In this example, our company has been asked to produce and deliver 1 million postcards to Des Moines, Iowa by July 16th. Before we can accept this job from our client, we need to make sure that we can in fact meet the July 16th deadline. We'll work backward to figure out what the last possible start date can be for the project and then based on that start date, we can determine if we can or cannot meet the client's needs. To do that, we are going to establish a list of steps that are necessary to complete the given task. So in this case, our task is we need to print and deliver 1 million postcards by July 16th, 2022. What steps are necessary to complete this task? Now, you may not be as familiar with the printing industry as I am, so what I want you to do is as we're going through this, think about a task that you would have to complete in your industry or for your boss or for your client. The steps to complete the postcards are as follows. We need to design the postcards. We're going to need to get cost estimates to print those postcards. We need to approve the costs and return what's called a, a PO or a purchase order. We'll send the final design files to the person who's going to print the postcards. Their pre-press department will have to prep the files. They will make and deliver proofs to us, which we will then have to sign off on or approve. Once the proofs are approved, the printing company will get us scheduled for some time on press. They'll then make the printing plates. They'll set up the printing press. They'll print the postcards, trim the postcards to size, pack them into boxes, and then finally they can ship them to Des Moines, Iowa for us. Knowing that I have to do all 14 of these things in order to get this project done on time allows me to kind of figure out how long the project will take because our next step will be to figure out how long each step in the process will take. Now, if you were figuring out how long it will take you to change your oil in your car, these timed values would not be in terms of days because that's unrealistic. You wouldn't say that you're going to spend one day unscrewing the air, the oil filter, and one day installing a new air filter, you would say it will take me one minute to, in, to uninstall the air filter and three minutes to find and install the new air filter. But because I'm working in terms of things that take a lot of time, I've made it in terms of days. Even tasks that don't take an entire day, instead of saying it takes 45 minutes or two and a half hours, I've compared apples to apples by putting everything in my process in terms of days so everything is in the same format. 
if I'm doing oil changing, the format might be minutes for all of my, all the steps in my process. In this example, I'm going to take five days to design the postcards and three days to send out and request cost estimates and get them back. An entire day to kind of look over the estimates and approve where we want to get the job printed and send that purchase order to the client. It's going to take, let's say, a quarter of a day to send the final files. We'll give them one full day in their pre-press department to prepare the files at the print shop. We'll give them two more days to make and then deliver proofs to me. And I'll give myself one day to approve the proofs and one day to ship it back to them. An entire day for them to figure out when they can schedule us for press. They'll also then need to make printing plates. I dedicated half, a quarter of a day. They need to set up the press, maybe half of a day. Uh, they'll print postcards. It will take three days to print a million postcards. They'll trim them. Maybe it takes half a day to do the trimming. They'll pack them in boxes for another half of a day. And then it will take five days to ship from our location to Des Moines, Iowa. When you are estimating these times, you need to have accurate times. So you'll need to consult the people that are doing the processes. And when in doubt, you should overestimate to create buffer time, but you don't want to go way overboard. You don't want to say that you need 50 days to design a postcard because you might lose out on jobs where a client says it's unrealistic for me to wait, you know, two months for you to design something that I really just want you to throw together really fast. Now that we know how much time each step of the process will take, we're going to map it out on a timeline. We're going to have a start date that we don't know, and we have a, an end date or the date that our project needs to be done. So on this timeline, immediately I'm going to put a hypothetical start date that I don't know, and at the very end, the delivery date of July 16th, and then we're going to work backwards. So we're going to take a look at our steps 1 through 14, and starting with step 14, we're going to map out how long each step of the process will take. So step 14 takes five days, and if you look at my, my calendar where I'm giving you a little bit of insight on what it's going to look like, you can see that five days beforehand we'll be delivering the postcards and then there's a day here if you can if you can see where I'm going with that. So if we take all of those 14 steps and we work backwards we can say that July 16th is the date it will be delivered. So if I need five days to ship for time in transit I'm gonna dedicate five days which would be July 11th through 15th, 11th, 12th, 13th, 14th, and 15th for the shipping so then it will arrive on the 16th Steps 12 and 13, if we go back to them, will take each take a half day. So I can do them both in the same day if I wanted to. So I'm going to say that, whoops, that the 10th one day is going to be steps 12 and 13 because I can do each in half of a day. For printing, it will take, I think, three days, right? So it'll take July 16th, uh, July 7th, 8th, and 9th. That should be the 7th. And then if we look at steps 9 and 10, 9 is a fourth of a day and 10 is a half of a day. I can't do anything else that day because step 8 takes an entire day just for itself, right? So even though I don't need the full day here, I'm going to say that July 6th will be steps 9 and 10. There'll just be kind of buffer room in there in case one of those steps takes longer. It takes an entire day for scheduling, so that will be on July 5th. To return proofs, I allowed for two days, so I'm going to budget July 3rd and 4th. To make and deliver the proofs would be two days as well, so that's July 1st and 2nd. Pre-press was an entire day, that'll be June 30th. We need to get estimates, we budgeted three days for that, so that'll be June, no, yeah, June 27th, 28th, and 29th. And then five days to make postcards, so that would be June 22nd, 23rd, 24th, 25th, and 26th, which means that the client will have to give us the job on June 21st or at the very least June 26th in the morning for us to be able to get this job done and delivered to Des Moines, Iowa. So if a client comes to us in April, on April 6th and says, can you get this job done? What we can do is say, absolutely, we can get that job done. We can even say to them, if you want them delivered to Des Moines, Iowa by July 16th, you need to have everything submitted and the contract signed with us and we could put a date any time before June 21st. We could say, we need by June 1st, we need the contract, and then we can get started. And that gives us a bunch of buffer room. If they say, well, I can't get files to you until June 16th, we could even say, you know what, 
that's fine. We can still make your deadline. But if they come to us on July 7th and say, can you deliver to Des Moines, Iowa by July 16th, based on this information, we have to tell them, I'm sorry, there's no way for us to finish that project by the time that you need it. And so in this case, at the very least, in the morning on the 22nd, we need to be starting the job for the postcards. Now, this kind of is an overzealous estimate because it doesn't take into consideration weekdays, I mean weekends. So if you wanted to be more accurate, you would want to work on a five-day work week schedule. And so every time you look at the calendar, if you hit a weekend, you have to skip those days. So let's say, well, let's, let's look at a calendar. Okay, let's look at this calendar, it'll be easier to see. So in this example, if I was working backwards from July, we wanted to deliver on July 16th, right? July 16th was a Saturday, so I would assume we need to deliver on the 15th. So we'd actually change the delivery date to the 15th. And if it took three days to print something, and then two days to do something else, um, I would say that the three-day task would be July 14th, 13th, and 12th. But when I get to Monday the 11th, I couldn't say that that next two-day task would be the 11th and the 10th, I would say it would be the 11th, I would skip the 9th and the 10th and the 8th. So that task that takes two days would be on Friday the 8th and Monday the 11th. And so every time I get to a weekend day, I would want to skip those days. So that wraps up our lecture on calculating turnaround times. At this point, you should understand what a turnaround time is, the time that it takes from start to finish to complete a task. You should be able to identify the steps needed to complete a task, and what I would like you to do is for you to pretend that you're creating a turnaround time for something in your industry, and to repeat what we did in this lesson on your own, and I will give you a hint that that is the homework, so you'll need to do it anyway, so go ahead and do it now. You'll then assign values for each item or step along the way in that process. Um, when you sum those times, you can calculate how much time it will take to complete a task from start to finish, and then you can use that to be able to effectively communicate with your clients. If you have any questions, please contact me during online office hours or consider attending my weekly live info sessions.